Hello, beautiful people. Have you ever wondered how much better your body could feel if you knew how to move properly throughout the day? A lot of us never think about how good or how bad we move doing the normal things you do every day. Are you standing up correctly, sitting down wrong, twisting your back? Sometimes we don't even realize that we are moving in a way that is creating more wear and tear in your joints. If I can help you become more aware of these bad movement patterns, you can make the necessary changes to have better posture and move with less pain. So today I wanna go over five things that you may be doing wrong every day that could be the cause of that annoying pain you've been having. I'll show you what those are and also show you how you can improve them moving forward. The only thing I ask in return is you hit the like button at the bottom of this video because more people can find this useful as well. Having said that, let's dive in. Getting in and out of the car. Who would have thought that there is a right and wrong way to getting in and out of your car? An interesting fact is that I knew about this even before I became a trainer and learned this working as a valet attendant for a big hotel chain. The first thing that they teach you is there is a proper form entering and exiting your car and the reason for that is because you do that dozens of times during the day as a valet person. There were guys that even needed knee surgery because they wouldn't follow those instructions. So I hope I get your attention now. So if you have been getting in your car like everyone else by just putting one foot on the floor while you twist the rest of your body to get in, today we have to change that habit. The reason that is damaging to the knee is because it creates something called shear forces inside your knee. And that means it's an unnatural way for your knee to move. It's not designed to do that. All that does is wear and tear at the cartilage. So if you're not going to do that ninja move of getting your leg all the way out, how else can you get in and out of the car? The simplest and most effective way to get in and out of your car is by sitting down as you normally would with your feet together and then rotating at the hips as you bring both legs into your core. If you do it this way, you're avoiding those sheer forces that damage the knee. Wearing worn out shoes. You probably heard this one before, but I want you to find your shoe or if you're wearing it, look at it and compare one shoe with the other. Are they even? Is the thread too worn out where you can't even see it? Wearing the proper shoe is incredibly important because it is the first thing that strikes the ground when you walk. If your shoes are worn out, even if they are mildly worn out, they will affect all the other joints going up like your knees, your hips, and your back. When it comes to wearing the proper shoes, you definitely don't wanna go cheap especially if it's something that you use for exercise. You should change your shoes every six months maximum or up, or up to a year if you don't use them regularly. But you can visually check them and if you see some wear, probably better to just change to a new pair. There are many stores where you can go and get properly fitted for the right shoes that will give you the best support. If you have flat feet, Wearing extra support may be necessary or even orthotics. But please don't skip on this. The damage that comes from not addressing this issue could be very long lasting. And talking about shoes, let me give you a good example of a good shoe versus a bad shoe. Now, this is the shoe that I wear normally just to clean or to do something outside where I'm not wearing it for more than 10 to 15 minutes. This is the other shoe that I wear to work out or to make videos for you guys. So check out the thread difference in between this shoe with the worn out shoe. Also, if you look at them from the back, you're gonna see that the green shoe, which is the worn out shoe, it, I actually have a little supination of the foot, so it's more worn out on the outside, and which will affect also my other shoe. And so, it's very important that as soon as you start seeing some wear and tear on your shoe, start wearing something else, especially if you're doing it 
for walking or working out. Crossing your legs. This is something we do unconsciously because it just feels natural. The problem is that anytime you cross your legs, your back rounds, and when that happens, it predisposes you for herniated discs or back pain. So what is the fix? Very simple. If you absolutely have to cross your legs, you can modify it and instead cross your ankles. It'll take some time to get used to it, but your body is gonna thank you. Picking up stuff with bad form. Many times during a normal day, we have to bend over and pick stuff off the floor. It's something you can't really avoid, unless you have one of these. Then you don't have to bend over. Seriously though, it's not about whether or not you should bend to pick stuff up, it's more about how you bend. It's always quality over quantity. But there is definitely a right way and a wrong way to do it. If you are bending with a rounded back to pick up stuff, you're more likely to create damage in your spinal discs. No matter, no matter if you work out or not, it only takes one bad movement to create an injury. So what is the proper form when it comes to bending? Well, you probably already know that when you bend, you have to bend with a straight back or squat down to pick up an object. That's the other alternative. It is much easier said than done though. First of all, since you can't see your back, you don't know if you're bending the right way or if you're bending with a straight back. Second, if you're unaware of how you've been bending over the past few years, just thinking about it one time or practicing one time is not gonna make any difference. You have to make it a goal and practice good movement form. If you haven't had a trainer teach you the proper form on these movements, you have to make it a goal and practice good movement. Most likely, it'll take weeks or months if you haven't had a trainer teach you the proper form on these movements. But the key is to get started. Once you learn how to properly bend, it'll become second nature and you won't have to even think about it. Having a repetitive job. There are jobs that require you to do the same movements over and over again. For example, a hairdresser cutting hair all day needs to keep their elbows and arms raised in order to do their job. They could be in this position for hours. Or a plumber needs to be on their knees a good amount of time while they're performing their job. Or even a dentist that needs to see his patients all day and their head is forward, their upper back is rounded or bent in order to reach their patients. There are many more examples, but the point is, Whenever you have to do the same activity and your muscles are stuck in that position for hours and sometimes the whole day, that creates something called overuse injury or also a repetitive injury. One of the things that happen with this type of injuries is that repetitive movements create knots inside the muscles. These knots lead to compensation in other joints and this leads to a vicious cycle of pain. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to quit your job unless you have some real bad bosses that don't care about their job and lead the business to the ground. <clears throat> but what you can do is take breaks in between your clients or set a timer to break up the movement pattern after a set amount of time, could be every hour. Another great thing is working out opposite to the movement that you are doing repetitively. For example, if you are sitting down a lot, don't go to the gym to sit down on the machines to do exercise. It doesn't work that way. You want to do the opposite, which means you're exercising standing up and doing a lot of rowing or pulling movements that will strengthen your back and break up the bad movement pattern. That's it, guys. If you caught yourself guilty of some of these five things, my recommendation is to start working one-on-one -on -one so you can devote your full attention to fixing one thing at a time in order to make things more manageable. If you can improve on all these things and you are still having pain, then I always recommend getting the help of your physician, your doctor, and coming up with a plan for your health and fitness. But hope you enjoyed this video 
and find it useful. I have a passion for helping people improve their fitness and get rid of pain naturally without any pills or surgery. Also, we'll be releasing our website soon where you can ask more questions or you can have a real personal trainer help you out with your fitness goals. Stay tuned.